Hello YouTube, I just want to show a setup I have for uh, basically a kit flash system, a uh, fast recharge of a um, Vivitar 285HV flash unit with a, a radio trigger, remote trigger, uh, using a 12 volt 10 amp hour battery here, a voltage converter that goes that can take the battery voltage from varies from 13 and a half to 12 and a half but it gives a constant output of about nine volts, feeding into a quantum turbo battery case uh, that used to have one of those, uh, there's three in a bank there, but it used to have one of those inside uh, as a sealed lead acid battery. That's how these old uh, turbos work. They had that, you might see on eBay where the people will resell the unit, C-E-L-L, -L, not S-E-L-L. -L. And they mean putting a new battery of that inside this case. Uh, what I've done, I, I did have, was this setup, which is three of these somewhat odd 8-volt batteries in, in wired up in parallel, feeding this unit uh, directly here. Now, that was, that was good, but... It turns out these batteries have various lifetimes, and I've had I've had a situation where maybe one goes bad, but the other two aren't, and then trying to diagnose it is really sort of a hassle. So, uh, in parallel, these this is 9,600 milliamp hours uh, capacity at eight volts. This battery uh, has 10 amp hours at 12 volts, so 1,200 watt hours versus about. 800 watt hours so it's quite a bit of an increase uh, in actual capacity I figure 2500 full power flashes on the Vivitar which is said to be about 80 watts maximum power 80 watt seconds maximum power it can also um, do automatic modes where it uses much less energy but 2,500 shots at full power using this setup, it should be about the uh, about the right situation. So the component detail is, again, the 12-volt battery, which you can get all day long. Uh, this battery here. These power packs, um, depends on if it's working or not. If it needs to get one that needs a new battery, maybe $40. If it, has, if it works, maybe $80. But what I've done is, you see, I've cut a hole in the side, and I've removed the battery the battery it had like that and now these wires just connect to the terminals which are uh, f2 terminals i think they're maybe they're f1 f1 is 3 16 wide spade f2 is quarter inch wide 0.250 uh, so whatever ones it had it probably had the f1 which is a 1818 uh, decimal uh, or uh, 3 16 so anyway that's what's connecting that wire uh, comes up to this quick disconnect which used to connect directly to this uh, parallel setup. Now I use this device, which is a DC to DC voltage converter. Basically, it'll step down the uh, input voltage, which I push the button here, which is right now 13.1 volts off the lead acid battery, and it brings it down to the nominal 9 volts, which would be a fully charged 8 volt battery. Um, so that is uh, feeding the circuit here feeding this high voltage uh, uh, converter, which takes that low voltage, turns it into high voltage, and charges the flash. So to see how it works, uh, in case you've never uh, had the pleasure of using a, a high-powered flash with a very fast recycling, I'm going to uh, turn this on here, and then the Vivitar unit, um, turn it on, and you'll note that it, note the reset, now I've got it set for full power, which is M on the Vivitar, uh, the module there. And I'm going to fire full power flashes and observe the recycling time, just how quick it is. About two seconds. Very fast. And that's on double A, fresh set of double A's would be 12, 15 seconds. Um, so this is this is how you get really good power uh, quickly. In fact, it's so powerful that if you do this about 30 times in a row, uh, fire right after the full power blinking occurs, uh, it'll actually overheat the flash. So this setup is easily capable of supplying a uh, you know on-site portable flash that's 
uh, as a group, it, it weighs something. I use a camera, a Low Pro Adventura 170 model camera bag that just exactly fits these components uh, very well. And they are, um, it's a really good setup for portable. I have two of these. Uh, I gotta still convert the other one, which had the three parallel eight volt batteries and use this setup. Um, one other thing was that the, uh, this unit here uh, costs about $15 on eBay. It's a DROK, D-R-O-K. Uh, I think the model number was um, 233146, but it's the unit that accepts zero to 30 volts in, or I'm sorry, 3.5 volts to 30 volts input and will deliver 0 0.8 volts to 29 volts output. And it can carry 10 amps. So that's the unit that's there. So this unit, this 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 pulls about six or seven amperes uh, as soon as it's, um, you know, the flash occurs and it quickly within two seconds drops off to less than an ampere. So nowhere near the uh, uh, load capacity of that unit uh, is being used because it's designed for up to 10 amperes continuous load. So no problem with that. Everything works great. To charge this, that's the one thing else to mention is that there's another identical connector in parallel down here so that the battery can be charged at the same time or not. Then it's being used. And to do that, I use, I have a power supply. You can use any 12 volt battery charger, but I happen to have this power supply set for two levels, a charge and then what's called the float. So right now it's the float value of 13.65 volts, that's the value, just leave it at, leave it connected to the uh, power, the battery continuously. On the um, initial charge, if it was discharged, I could be used heavily. Uh, there's the other uh, setting, which is the second bit, 14.7, and run it at that until it gets down to, uh, the, the reasoning is you use it uh, to 1% of the current drops to 1% of the battery's capacity. So 1% of 10,000 milliamp, hours, 1% is uh, 100 milliamp hours, so you just call it 100, in this case you just go by the milliamp. So 100 milliamps um, uh, indicates full charge once it gets down to that low of a current, and then it can be uh, switched back over to float. Um, the th I've got a call in to email into DROC about this uh, display, can it be turned off? Right now it takes 20 milliamps to drive this whole thing. Uh, on standby if it was disconnected from the charger, whether it's on the charger or not, it's 20 milliamp drain. And that means this battery is good for, this battery would be 500 hours. So it's not a big deal. You can take this onto a, a project for a whole day and have this minuscule uh, one, um, maybe eight hours or 12 hours, 10 hours out of uh, 500 hours. So have this negligible drain because of this unit and still the vast majority of energy available for um, flashes. They do have ones that can turn off the display, I know, but they don't carry 10 amps. So there's there's other choices besides that. A DC to DC buck converter, because it always the voltage output will be lower by about a volt than the input. That's as high as the output can be. It can be uh, not quite equal to the input. It can be a volt lower. And they have others that will boost voltage. If you need to raise voltage, it'll do these. So they have adjustable ones that can do both. So anyway, just want to show this video of this setup, a uh, very powerful setup with uh, like a, a flash that takes a lot of energy to recharge. Uh, this is a classic power uh, a unit that's been around for a long time. They no longer make this one. There's now, on the, I think, the uh, third generation. Uh, but this old style is very well built, uh, has a, this... Uh, module comes out of the case and it has all the electronics. It was originally designed to have a 12 volt charger plug in place of the uh, flash cable and charge it up and then you put you know run your flash cable this way you can actually um, you know it charges separately so you don't have to have uh, the charge cable you can you can keep using it when if you charge it if you bring a power supply or charger under this method of setup. Uh, I wanted to show what I have in this camera bag, this uh, Low Pro Adventura 170. Um, in the front here, there is, I have some goodies. I, I make this thing, um, make it a portable right here. Um, so I've got an extension cable, which would go on, so you'd plug this into the power pack 
and then uh, it extends to the, you can plug the coil cord into it, give quite a bit extra length. Extra batteries for the synchronization for the Vivitar because it needs still AA cells in it to operate even on high voltage. I got some extra and some extra triple A's for the um, wireless sleigh, which is a, I use Young Nuo 603 uh, in for Nikon uh, Roman numeral two uh, unit, and then a set of Vivitar uh, 21 millimeter, 24 millimeter coverage color filters. I probably never use those. I just use the wide angle filter that adds no color. Uh, on the unit, and in case uh, if I've got uh, I take I got two setups identical. Uh, in case one though uh, goes dead, this attachment on the uh, Quantum allows two flash units to uh, draw off the same high voltage power pack. So a little bit of kit. I got a diffuser over here. Uh, this takes care of a, sort of a and you can do bounce flash on the Vivitar. Have the diffuser, um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, what this kit contains. So putting it all back together is nice and neat. Uh, the flash uh, fits nicely on this side uh, as far as storage ready for use. Oh, video's crummy. There, the uh, quantum pack will go on the right hand side and the battery with its uh, with this butt converter right in the middle and it forms a real nice setup. Uh, it's all one pack of a studio studio power lighting and you can bring along your whatever other lighting uh, umbrella whatever with this thing but it's on one case uh, it can be like I said charged uh, without removing anything from the case and it's just sort of a nice setup in case you wanted a, a high power flash unit you don't have to use the Vivitar brand those other brands of flash. The main thing is that uh, you take this high voltage uh, flash that can handle high voltage charging. There's several, and you can make it a very high capacity, much higher than the original. The original was 3,200 milliamp hours, only using one of these in the quantum unit, from 3,200 to uh, 10,000. So it's a threefold increase, and because it's 12 volts, it's actually going through the converter. You actually get even more than the ratio of. Uh, 10,000 to 3,200. It's even more, like 12,000 to 3,200 is the ratio. So much more, much more longevity. Uh, even with three of these, uh, still a little bit more, about 20% more uh, from the 12 volt uh, setup here than than this setup. So and less to go wrong because you have one battery instead of three. Well, anyway, that's the story. I uh, hope this uh, might help somebody. So it's an Aventura 170 low pro brand uh, case. Vivitar 285. Um, uh, HV flash unit with the uh, Young No 603 uh, in uh, Roman numeral 2, second generation of that. Um, this can drop uh, 0 to uh, 3.5 volt to 30 volt input, uh, 0 0.8 volt to 29 volt output, and a classic quantum turbo battery pack that's been um, just has the wires connected to the what you, the battery terminals inside. And that is it. I'm going to modify the other one I have. I have the battery there ready to go. There's the drock, the other drock, and there's the old uh, parallel wiring that was associated with that setup. So hope this helps somebody that needs, uh, would like to have a really long live portable high power flash. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, you take care.